Well guys, it's now time for my week 8 picks of the 2021 NFL season. As last week, I went 11-2, which is the best week so far for this year in terms of winning percentage. As of 71-36 right now. At least, made a, ter a really good return after the terrible week in week 6. And of course, here's the regular season stands. And the playoff stands at the season end of the day. In the AFC, it's the Bengals with the bye, with Browns at Raiders, Chargers at Titans, and Ravens at Bills. And the NFC, it's Cardinals with the bye, with Vikings at Buccaneers, Saints at Packers, and Rams at Cowboys. And my Super Bowl pick right now is the Buccaneers over the Titans. Alright, so now, let's get to my Week 8 picks. Starting off with the big one on Thursday night. Probably the biggest Thursday night game in a while. As the Packers are at the Cardinals for the first time since 2015. As the Cardinals are trying to go 8-0 for the first time ever in their 123-year history. As the Pack um, Cardinals won the last two. The Packers haven't beaten them since 2012. And they haven't beaten them in Glendale since 2009. So, of course, the Packers... Who did they play again? I feel stupid not remembering. So, sadly, it's just... Oh, wait. Yeah, it was a football team I mean to say. They beat them high school by... Quite a big margin, but it wasn't really that really impressive. You see, their stats are not really that good. Meanwhile, the Cardinals beat... Oh, my God. I don't know why none of their games are coming off the top of my head from, like, last week. I know they were hosting someone, but just... Oh, yeah, the Texans. I don't know why the, none of the teams are just coming to my head today. As they have, like, one of the best offenses in the league. They destroyed the Texans after the slow start. As both DeAndre Hopkins and J.J. Watt got their revenge... Now, this is a big game for them, not only for terms of, like, showing that they are indeed that good, but it's also important in terms of the playoff seeds, because they beat the Rams once, that's good, but now you gotta go up against one of the teams that you gotta probably deal with getting a home field advantage, possibly, too. Still gotta play the Cowboys later, don't have to play the Buccaneers, I think you still gotta play the Rams one more time as well. So, this is very important for them, but you know what? Even though their stats look better, and even though they've had a but better history coasting the Packers and have beaten them two in a row. I'm actually going to pick the Packers and it may be upset to get the victory over the Cardinals. Don't think they're going to have that win streak for long, but we'll see about that eventually. Alright, then we get to Sunday action for Halloween. As it'll start off with Bengals at the Jets for the first time since 2016. As the Bengals won the last three, the Jets haven't beaten them since that Thanksgiving game in 2010. So, of course, the Bengals absolutely embarrassed the Ravens as I think with that they finally solidified themselves as a playoff team so far this year they've already beaten their win total set the last um oh actually no they've almost tied their win total the last two years this is their most win since 2018 as they crushed the Ravens now they have home field advantage right now meanwhile the Jets of course got destroyed by the Patriots I mean was anyone really surprised especially when they have the worst offense in the league to the point now with their defense, which was looking really good first, is looking like garbage. And now Zach Wilson's injured. So, it's not looking good for the Jets. Now, this one, although the Jets are bad, they're struggling, the Bengals are on a roll. This is definitely a trap game for the, the um, Bengals. I could easily see them losing this one. Especially since, remember, the Jets, despite how bad they were, they did beat two playoff teams last year. So, Bengals, you need to take the Jets seriously. But against my better judgment... I have a feeling that they're probably going to win, but I'm still going to pick you nonetheless. And then we get to a big one in the AFC South, as the Titans are at the Colts. As the Titans won the last two, the Colts haven't beaten them since last year. And they haven't won at home since 2018. So, the Titans crushed the, tit um, the Chiefs. So, back-to-back -back huge wins against the Bills and the Chiefs. Finally, like, saved their seasons. They're now 5-2, looking more like how they're supposed to be, although their stats are still not really that good for what they need to be for that explosive offense they have. But that was a needed victory. Meanwhile, the Colts beat the 49ers as they now won two in a row. They're starting to recover from their slow start here, although they should be 4-3 and three if we're being honest with you. This is pretty important for them because if the Titans win this one, they'll have not only a free game lead in the AFC South, but they will have the tiebreaker over the only team that could probably challenge them. So that is crucial that they get this win. Same goes for the Colts. That way they'll be within one game of the Titans. This is gonna this is kind of a tough one. Because on the one hand, 
if you kind of look at some of their stats, the Colts might be better than the Titans in some regard. But at the same time, the Titans crushed them the last time they visited them. There's a reason why they haven't beat them in three years. So this one's going to be a tough one. But I think I'm going to trust the Colts by just a little bit over at Titans. But I won't be surprised if they win it to keep the um, big lead in the division going. Then for a lopsided match, as the Rams are at the Texans for the first time since 2013... The Rams won the last two. The Texans haven't beaten them since 2009. And the Rams have never won in Houston the three times, I mean, the two times before they tried in 2005 and 13. Wait, no, they, wait, they did win, actually. I'm a fucking idiot. Maybe the Texans haven't beat, oh, that's right, I don't think the Texans beat them, hosting them. I'm getting that all mixed up. So anyways, the Rams, they beat the Lions in a quite competitive game as Matthew Stafford got his revenge. Barely held on. Did I kind of looked kind of bad on their regard? But hey, they still won it, and they're still in the driver's seat for a wild card spot. And meanwhile, the Texans, of course, why are we surprised? They got crushed by the Cardinals after at first looking like they were gonna maybe pull off an upset. And of course, who knows if that Deshaun Watson trade is gonna happen? But as long as they don't start them, this team is literally nothing. As we see, like they probably statistically are the worst team in like every single regard. Like look at how bad their best stat, their pass defense is 21st. That's how bad we're talking about. Like nothing going good for them. So the Rams, you might want to take the Texans seriously, especially since you struggled against the Lions. But I'm still gonna pick you to get the win. Then a big one in the AFC playoff pitch or the AFC North as the Steelers are at the Browns. As the Browns won the last one, the Steelers haven't beaten them since last year. And they haven't won in Cleveland since 2017. So, of course, the Steelers were on their bye when they beat the Seahawks in overtime. Really important win right there as they got two in a row now. Meanwhile, the Browns, battered and injured, they still managed to hold on to beat the Broncos last Thursday night. But... Unless Baker comes back, and I have no idea if Nick Chubb's going to come back. This is pretty much a doomed game for them, unfortunately. The Steelers are a much better team than the Broncos, so I'm picking the Steelers against the injury-riddled Browns to get it. Then, it's the Eagles at the Lions for the first time since 2016, as the Lions try to avoid 0-8 for the first time since 2008. Lions won the last three, though. Eagles haven't beaten them since 2013, and they haven't won in Detroit since 2010. So, of course, the Eagles lost to the Raiders, although they made it somewhat competitive near the end. And the Lions, once again, showing that despite how bad they are, they are trying their best as they almost pulled it off against the Rams. They really put up a good effort against them. So, the Lions are a lot better team than their record would indicate. They just haven't been lucky in terms of score. I mean, I'm winning it. And, of course, this could be a tough one for them. The Eagles are a team you should watch out for, but you know what? I'm actually going to pick the Lions and upset to get it. And we'll see if the Eagles can get that 2013 vibe that I still feel like they're going to be having t for another week or so. But I'm picking the Lions for that. Then it's the 49ers at the Bears. As the first time since 2008, no, 2017. As the, 40, the Bears won the last one. The 49ers haven't beaten them since 2017. And the Bears haven't beaten them at home since 2016. So the 49ers lost to the Colts. Their first game this year where they lost by more than um, a score. Like, for the 30-18, all the other games this year was all within a score. So not looking good for them as they now lost two in a row. Meanwhile, the Bears got destroyed by the Buccaneers. Like, embarrassingly so as they have the worst offense in the league. They just are a bad team that's just overrated. They're like a flip of the Lions. The Lions are a much better team than their 0-7 record. The Bears are a much worse team than their 3-4 and four record. Like, they're really bad. And you know what? With the Bears being so bad, I'm going to pick the 49ers to get it. But watch, of course, the Bears are going to continue overflating themselves and somehow win this one when they really should not be. Then a big one in the AFC, I mean NFC South, as the Panthers are at the Falcons. The Falcons won the last two. The, um... Fal the um, Panthers, actually, no, that's incorrect. They won the last one. Panthers last beat them in 2020. The Falcons haven't beaten them at home since 2019. So, anyways, the Panthers, yeah, like, all that momentum, like I said from the start, that 3-0 start was just bad against, I mean, not was only against bad teams. And, dude, they couldn't even beat the Giants! And the fact that they got crushed by them is embarrassing. Is now, they're in the same, I mean, um, 
um, Deshaun Watson trade talks now. So yeah, they're just not really a good team whatsoever. Their offense is just garbage. Meanwhile, the Falcons got the comeback against the Dolphins after they blew their lead again, but this time they didn't choke us. Now they're free and free, won two in a row, and hey, still hanging in there for a playoff um, spot, only missing out in the playoffs by a tiebreaker right now over the Vikings. The Falcons are on a bit of a roll. The Panthers are playing terrible right now. So I'm going to pick the Falcons again to match their win total from last year. And then watch, all of a sudden, the Panthers are going to pull a miracle off and get the win that they need to. All right, then an AFC East matchup as the Dolphins are at the Bills. As the Bills won the last six, the Dolphins haven't beaten them since 2018 and 2016 in Buffalo. As the Dolphins, this is pretty bad for them as they already matched their loss total from last year. As nothing's going right from back-to-back -back games where they had the Falcons and the Jaguars on the ropes, but they couldn't seal the victory on the last play of the game. Meanwhile, the Bills off their bye from their good but disappointing loss still against the Titans. They didn't really play bad, and I don't blame them for trying on 4th and 1 right at the goal line. Like, I would probably try that as well. One of, it wasn't a bad loss, but still was... Kind of hurt since the Titans are leading their divi um, the playoff race right now. Not looking good in that regard. But of course, this is the Dolphins. We know the Bills streak against them right now. So I'm picking the Bills for this. Then we get to the 4 p.m. games. Starting off with an important one in the AFC side. As the Patriots are at the Chargers for the second year in a row. The Patriots won the last four. The Chargers haven't beaten them since 2008. So the Patriots absolutely destroyed the Jets as they're still... Playing overall much better than their 3-4 and four record. Hell, they should be like 6-1 and one right now if they were lucky. Meanwhile, the Chargers got... Cr I still don't even know they're on, they on their bye after they got crushed by the Ravens last week. I still don't even know exactly how they got crushed by the Ravens so much. When statistically, the Ravens didn't really play that much better. Hell, I think Herbert probably outplayed um, Lamar. But they lost a bad one. And that really put a damper on their playoff bracket for the moment as they're... Still trying to keep up with the Raiders in that division, which they need to win this since they have the tiebreaker over them for the moment. Now, of course, remember, this is a rematch from last year where the Patriots shut them out 45 to nothing. So, although I think the Chargers got better, I think the Patriots also got better. And I'm going to pick the Patriots to get this one. I have a lot more faith in them right now than I do the Chargers, especially when you look at their stats. Then it'll be the Jaguars at the Seahawks for the first time since 2013. As the Jaguars won the last one, the Seahawks haven't beaten them since 2013, and the Jaguars have never beaten the Seahawks in Seattle, so want to get that one badly. As the Jaguars are off their bye after they got their first win since week one of 2020 over the Dolphins on the last second play of the game, so good for them. But now they got to go up against a better team, but still a much better team than the Seahawks, who, oh my god, Lost another close one to the Vikings. Although they're struggling, a lot of their games have been very close. And we know, and we all know damn well if Russell Wilson was playing in these um, last two games, they would have won both of them. So this team would be probably like four and three right now, right now, if it wasn't for him getting injured. So they're playing a lot better than their stats would indicate very much. So I'm picking the Seahawks to get this one. Now they're not playing a playoff team. They're playing like one of the worst teams in the league. Maybe this time with Geno, they could probably get the W. All right, then it's the football team at the Broncos for the first time since 2013. As the football team won the last one, the Broncos haven't beaten them since 2013. And the football team hasn't beaten them in Denver since 2001. So, of course, the football team lost to the Packers with the, still with their worst defense in the league. The funny thing was, that game was a lot closer than the score of indicated if it wasn't for um, Heineke falling short of that goal line. And then, what was it, like one or two times they went to the end zone? And got stopped and didn't and turned it over. This game, that game was a lot closer than the football team maybe could have won it. But unfortunately for them, they still didn't. And they now lost three in a row. Meanwhile, the Broncos, just like the Panthers earlier. Of course, they lost to the Browns last week in a closer one. And you know what? Now the way they played, I'm starting to think that maybe the Broncos are the better team of the Panthers. Whereas before I said it was the opposite. Because at least their games <coughs> are being pretty competitive in comparison. And their offense isn't quite shit in the bed as the Panthers are. This is a tough one to pick. Because on the one hand, I think the football team is better. But that defense of theirs is so bad that maybe the Panthers offense could... I mean, not Broncos offense could give them a chance. And I mean, the football team offense hasn't been really that good either against 
better defense. Now they got to deal with the Broncos, too. Like, this is really like a toss-up one. Like, it's hard to pick. Oh, boy. But you know what? Despite their terrible defense, I think I'll still just pick the football team because I think I trust their offense more. But they're going to have a tough time against that defense. That's a tough one to pick. That is a really tough one to pick. Probably the toughest one so far this year for me to pick. Then we get to a big one in the NFC South as the Buccaneers are at the Saints. As the Saints won the last five, the Buccaneers haven't beaten them since 2018. So, of course, the Buccaneers, after they crushed the Bears, now have like one of the most elite offense in the league, except for the Russian offense, although their defense is still kind of not good. Still don't look like the same team they were in the Super Bowl. Hey, that was a big window against the um, Bears, and they have now won four in a row. Meanwhile, the Saints, although their stats aren't looking good other than their dominant defense so far these last few weeks, they still have won beat the Seahawks last week, and they're in the playoff race, and this is a big one for them. This is like the reverse of last year where the Buccaneers were down by a couple games behind the Saints. Now the Saints need to get the victory here. Of course, their rematch from their playoff game last year. This is also another tough one to pick because... Remember, the Saints swept the Buccaneers last year in the, in the um, regular season. And they kind of embarrassed them, especially that 38-3 victory, remember. And that was because, too, especially that one game, because the Saints' incredible defense in those games. And guess what? They have the elite defense right now. The only reason the Buccaneers won the divisional game last year is because Drew Brees shat the bed in that game. This one is very difficult to pick, too. But you know what? With that, number, with that elite defense... With how Brady struggles against really good defenses, as we saw against the Rams earlier this year, and Jameis Winston going up and down in terms of, like, performance, I'm actually going to pick the Saints in an upset to get it. Yeah, watch me shit the bed and get proven wrong, though, but I'm picking the Saints to get this in an upset. Then we get to a big one, the NFC playoff bracket. As for Sunday night, it's the Cowboys at the Vikings for the second year in a row. This is the third year they played each other, too. As the Cowboys won the last one, the Vikings haven't beaten them since 2019, Sunday night, remember? And the Cowboys, they haven't beaten the Cowboys at home since 2010, when Favre was their quarterback. So the Cowboys are on their bye after an impressive overtime victory against the Patriots. That was neat as they've now won five in a row on trying to match their win total from last year and keep that big lead they have in the NFC East. Meanwhile, the Vikings now won three in a, I mean, two in a row from their bye as well when they had to pull off the comeback against the Panthers after they choked it. They're looking a lot better than the record indicates. In fact, all three of their losses were within a, t a score, so they could be 6-0 right now if they were lucky. Now, of course, remember last year these two played each other. Both games went down to the wire the last two years. The Vikings won in Arlington 2019, and the Cowboys won last year despite not having Dak. Now, of course, unfortunately for the Vikings is that the fact that the Cowboys beat them last year without Dak, and now that they have them, it's going to make it tougher for them, so I'm going to pick the Cowboys again. But, hey, I wouldn't be surprised if the Vikings get it. They did in 2019 when the Cowboys were probably better than they are right now, so I wouldn't be surprised. And then we get to Monday night, the game that I still don't know why they picked it when we go into November, especially now with the Chiefs record, as the Giants are at the Chiefs for the first time since 2013. The Giants won the last one. The Chiefs haven't won since 2013. The Giants haven't won an Arrowhead since 2009. So, of course, the Giants completely embarrassed the Panthers, like shutting down their playoff hopes, looks like right now, is hoping that they themselves got back in the playoff race right now. But they got a tough challenge ahead of them as they got to play the Chiefs, who got absolutely destroyed by the Titans in their rematch from the AFC Championship. Like I said, for the last, like, Almost an entire year now since last year's um like end of 2020 where they kept having all these close games they won. There is something wrong with the Chiefs. Not just their offense, their I mean not their defense. Now and Mahomes is taking a step back too. He's thrown he's on track to throw more interceptions than he did in his most year, which was eleven in 2018. He's almost tied that. That's how close it is. God, like, geez, he's on track, I think, to maybe throw twenty interceptions so far. Like, there's something really wrong with him. Plus, he got injured, too, so who knows if he's even going to play. But despite all their struggles, the Chiefs are still a vastly superior team to the Giants, so I'm picking the Chiefs for this one, but there's a lot of problems with them right now. So those are my picks for Week 8. I cannot wait for Packers at Cardinals tonight. So my Week 8 picks are the Packers over the Cardinals, Bengals over the Jets, Colts over the Titans, Rams over the Texans, Steelers over the Browns, 
Lions over the Eagles, 49ers over the Bears, Falcons over the Panthers, Bills over the Dolphins, Patriots over the Chargers, Seahawks over the Jaguars, football team over the Broncos, Saints over the Buccaneers, Cowboys over the Vikings, and Giants over the Chiefs. So see you guys next time for Week 9.